they will still suffer the consequences of their actions which are contrary to God's laws, and or they will also reap the divine benefits of understanding and obeying God's laws. Now in your Eastern religions, Hinduism and Buddhism, they have a term called karma defined in Fink and Wagnall's dictionary, as, 1. The spiritual force generated by one's action which determines one's reincarnated situation. 2. Loosely, fate. 3. Vibration. Karma, even by this definition does not accurately describe the same purpose or meaning of simple cause and effect. The term karma, loosely believed by many implies you must do this or that, or this or that has occurred, because it is your karma implying that it is also your fate. One can fall in the rut of blaming all experiences on their karma and therefore not adequately learning the lesson to release this perceived karma. The definition of karma implies that yes, there are consequences to your actions, but that you are doomed to pay back lifetime after lifetime, and does not take into consideration the release of payback, when the lesson is truly learned by the soul fragment. Remember this, at any instant when the true understanding and recognition has occurred regarding the error and effects of one's actions, that one can, through self-forgiveness, release any repetition of a transgression against another, self, and God. For example, let's say that the one known, as Hitler who was responsible for the deaths of millions, truly recognized and understood his transgressions against God in the moments, before he made his death transition. All things are possible, friends. And in those moments before his death from this live stream, he prayed to the God within him for forgiveness of self and all others and that he then put his will into God's will to be of service only unto the Father. Now for ones who believe in karma, they would say that the soul energy that was Hitler would be doomed to the same persecution he committed on others, as well as at least a million deaths at the hands of the tyrant such as was he. And if Hitler refused to see his folly, then undoubtedly his self-judgment before God would be severe. But, depending on the level of his understanding or learning of the lessons, his payback could be that he becomes one who devotes his entire next reincarnation life streams to the service of God by helping his fellow brethren overcome their spiritual starvation. Do you think then, that it is not possible that God would not welcome his servant back within his fold of truth, love and light? One must never forget, that even the victims of Hitler's hatred chose their victimhood. If ones choose not to become victims to anyone or any situations by always honoring God within self and all others and thus, living in balance with the laws of God and the creation, they would no longer create victimizers such as Hitler. It is really so simple. If they learn their lessons of how and why they created their victimhood, then they would also forgive themselves and all who they perceived victimized them, so that they, too, could release and be free of the bondage of karma. And on top of forgiveness, their release may involve actually being ever thankful to the Father within for bringing the lesson to them and thus helping them recognize their self-transgressions and becoming now free from the bondage of victimhood. Do you see the picture now? The responsibility for all manifested experiences lies with all who share in and exist within the experience. 14. You must honor all commitments made in service to God, the Father, the One within. Now let us describe what commitments are made in service to God versus commitments of this manifested illusion. Your most important commitment in service to God is to wisely understand and obey the laws of God and the creation which we are unfolding, for you here. This is the excellent way for honoring self and God within all others in service to God and the creation. Simply, understand and obey the laws of God and the creation. You ones have made this commitment difficult unto yourselves and it needn't any longer be so. You now have the laws before you and you need not any longer claim ignorance or misunderstanding. Do you see? Claim your divine holy godness now. We are all one. The time is now, before you to know and own the truth. Now let us discuss the other types of commitments made by first defining what commitment means in Fink and Wagnall's dictionary. 1. The act of committing to devote oneself unreservedly, or the state of being committed. 2. An engagement or pledge to do something. Other commitments which are made in service to God include marriage, parenthood, feeding and tending the physically hungry, poor and ill, and spreading the word of truth about the Spirit of God and the creation to all of your spiritually ignorant and starved brethren who will listen. Now a commitment you make to buy a house or car on credit to be paid by future income, is shaky at best, for both parties agreeing to these terms. Credit in this circumstance is a promise to pay later at some designated future time. 
Many families are now finding and many more will find that they cannot honor this promise to pay, because many have lost or will lose their jobs and thus do not have the income to pay. This is an example of a commitment which is not a service to God. Trillions of credit dollars have been made by few by the manipulation of credit and so, too, has trillions been lost by the many who have become trapped in obligations they cannot pay for. There are thousands of examples of commitments made of this type. So, if you make a promise or commitment to a fellow brother or sister to help them in some way such as pay them for a service performed, for you, or to feed their pets and take care of their home, while they are away, then your word represents your integrity to honor to the best of your ability all promises made to the other. Your personal power is in direct relationship to the integrity of your soul. This means, that, if your word of promise or commitment means nothing, then you dishonor yourself, your brethren and God and become powerless and thus a tool for evil. So the moral of this story is, think very carefully about any promises or commitments you make, before you give your word. Do not give your word for some future promise, unless you are certain you will be able to keep your word. And be certain you completely understand what any promise, oh for commitment, that is asked of you on this plane means, before you give your word to it. Because, if you are not careful as in the case of many so-called secret organizations, societies and mystery schools, your commitment to them may mean your inadvertent commitment to evil. A commitment made to evil or Satan is not a commitment made in service to God and therefore is not recognized by God. 15. You must obey the wisdom of God for the responsible and balanced procreation of your species. We have written about the commitment of marriage by a man and a woman to God, as being one of the necessary components to also becoming a parent for God which means procreating your species. See law number 8 You must not commit adultery. Now the divine and sacred act which was created by God for the procreation of the species you once call sexual union. God created this divine union to be performed between one man and one woman specifically for maintaining the balanced level of the species for each given planetary system. Now the fallen ones or adversaries of Godness have completely perverted and maligned this once sacred and divine act that at one time was done with complete love and devotion to the Father within each partner, so that it, sex, is now called a birthright to be done often, with impunity and with many partners of either sex and without consideration of love or responsible procreation. How we and the Father weep, for you. This one abuse of God's creation has nearly destroyed your species. Let us quote once again from, and they called his name Emmanuel, I am Sananda, page 55. The act of marriage and procreation must have the highest degree of pure intent and preparation, for upon these bonds and restrictions will rest the preservation of mankind as a species upon the planet. If everything is done and adhered to, justice and peace will come to all mankind, and life in the human form can be preserved. If man continues his selfish and imprudent behavior, he will sound his own death tariff. There reaches a point beyond which a planet cannot support the unbalanced system perpetrated by mankind. And yet, so shall it come to pass, read this carefully that man will not listen and bring destruction upon his own species. It will come about in some two millennium that man will have reached the point of self-destruction. This is 1991 friends, have you fulfilled this prophecy of Jesus the Christ Emmanuel and other prophets before him? And so is it projected by the prophets and shall it come to pass in its time of fulfillment and in my time of fulfillment? End of quote. Let's begin with God's directive about marriage and procreation between a man and a woman. It is very clear that this does not say, marriage and the sexual act is okay between a man and a man, or a woman and a woman, or two men and one woman or three women and one man, or etc. Again, the laws of balance are logical, meaning they were created specifically to maintain balance within the creation. Because of the various degrees of deliberate, systematic and malevolently lewd and lascivious sexual behaviors, which are the corruption for this divine union, and which have been and are practiced by most on your plane, the warning given above by our beloved Jesus Emmanuel is transpiring before your very eyes in this time frame. The sexual act was specifically designed to be performed by one man and one woman who had committed their divine love as one in the union of marriage, ordained by God. Through this union of love, the act of sexual intercourse between a husband and his wife, for procreation was a most sacred and honored responsibility, an extension of their love and commitment to God in his service, as parents of his children. Now remember the law of cause and effect. 
The effects of breaking this one directive of God are all about you today.